So if you guys remember, a long while back, I did a video of uh, a Ladybug Phantom of the Opera crossover. So this is kind of a remake of that video. This is and this is a straight up remake of <laughs> of that video, and I. Um, I, I, this is going to be vastly different than that one because in that one, they when they battled, it was them fighting the literal Phantom of the Opera, where it was Gabriel using the mask of the Phantom and manipulating him and using the fa Eric's ghost as as a weapon. Anyway, so this is a much this is a much different story. But technically, it's still a Ladybug fan of the Opera crossover, but not in the way you were expecting. So let's get started. So basically, in this story, what has happened is that there was an attempted assassination on um, the mayor's life. And essentially, who, it, who they're pointing fingers at is Ladybug. And they're like, well, what couldn't have been an Akuma? Nope, they were more or less... Like, it was adamant that it was Ladybug. And everyone's like, yeah, it could have been an Akuma, but remember this version of Paris is full of stupid people. So they're already like, well, we don't know if it was Ladybug or not, but we want to bring her in for questioning. And what happens, it's not just her, but the mayor is so terrified from that assassination attempt, was that he basically put makes a strike force and passes a law to hunt down and capture um, heroes of Paris. So anyone who gets a miracul who has a miraculous is now a target for this strike force. Um, and Chloe brings up the fact that, hey, I have one of those miraculous. And yeah, however, Chloe kind of gets strong armed into being the face of this group. And she even tells like the other like the other heroes, like, look, guys, I'm sorry, but like I got my arm twisted into this. And I didn't want to do this, but you know. I just I couldn't deal I couldn't deal with it, and rather than be all pissy, you know, because this is fan fiction and this is, in other words, better writing than Tom Aga Thomas Asterisk. They're like, look, we get it, Chloe, and we're sorry if we gotta fight you, you know, well, we're sorry we gotta fight you. But essentially, what happens is that someone leaks that Marinette is Ladybug, so her house gets stormed in by these. Uh, by the by the strike team her parents get arrested she has to take the miraculous box but but has to hide it like she has to keep it out of the government's hands because she's like this could be just as bad as hawk moth getting it until i can figure out how to stop this i need to hide it somewhere so she contacts cat noir get shoves it in the box to him and is like take all of this and he's like are you really marinette and he's like and she's like I'm, i'll tell you who i'm not anymore ladybug and yeah she gives tiki to him He's like, holy shit, Marinette. <laughs> uh, this is obviously before the whole thing with season five and whatnot, because we're just going to ignore that bullshit. Um, in fact, I've been ignoring um, Ladybug since season three for obvious reasons. Uh, <laughs> I've been ignoring Ladybug since the end of season three, and I feel like a lot of you guys have too. So, Lady, uh, so Marinette has to go underground. Like, she has to run off and get and hide because Strike Team finds her. They actually chase her into the tunnels, uh, in, deep into the tunnels and cata even the catacombs of Paris. And that's when she gets saved. Like she actually gets grabbed and saved by an old, by like this old man. And the old man says, I'm Eric. Like, my name's Eric. I found you. I don't mean you any harm, but I want to help you. You're a ladybug, right? And he's like, uh, and she's like, yeah. Why? Why are you helping me create the creepy old man? And he goes, well, uh, ages ago, I was wronged of a crime, and I avenged myself. So maybe you should take on a new... I you need to take on a new identity. There is, you know, you need to take on a new... You need to become something, uh, someone else. You need to become something else. And he's... Uh, and the ladybug's like, how? I don't have the miraculous. And he goes, there's your problem. That, uh, you know, if uh, if I gather right, like Eric explain, basically surmised that if I'm right, the Miraculous didn't do anything that you uh, that helped you. It basically did all the stuff for you. Let me guess. You, it gave you all those cool superpowers, but you never trained yourself fully to be a, you know, 
some, you know, you never trained yourself fully. You just depended more on the powers. And she goes, yes. <laughs> so Eric basically says, I can, tr I, may, I may be old, but I can teach you everything I know. You know, I can be an actual teacher to you rather than someone who just berates you and gives you all, uh, like, gives you bad advice or something like that. And she goes, that's very oddly specific, but okay, I'm in. So Eric basically becomes like her, the Descartes to her bat, to her Bruce Wayne and teaches her like all these new techniques. Like he teaches her st like the art of stealth, the art of misdirection, um, the art of deception, and also like how to use illusions. Not like super powered illusions, but more like sleight of hand, um, kind of like like hiding in the shadows, um, using mirrors, you know, things like that, like practical effects, like and using it. And she's like, so. This is oddly specific, but what what were you? And he goes, I wasn't... She's like, were you a hero? And he goes, I was shunned. I was an outcast. I, I would be considered an outcast even by today's standards. And I... Met, and I basically did some things that I don't regret, but also it cost me someone I cared about. And she goes, so what did you do? And, she, and he go and Eric goes. I lost my angel. So, at the end of it, he basically explains that what he's been making her into, and he make he's like, you will be. Have you ever heard the, the legend of the Phantom of the Opera? And she goes, um, no, I've never heard of that legend. And he goes, the Phantom of the Opera was a, a myth. It was a myth that hid in the in the um, in the in the Paris Opera House, the one that was destroyed ages ago. It was, a, it turned, it, everyone thought it was a ghost, but really it was a guy, a man, who used these same tricks and deceptions. And she goes, Eric, are you the Phantom? And he goes, kid, I'm old. I'm not that old. <laughs> He's like, yeah, kid, I am not that old. Do I look, do I look like over 200 years old? And she goes, you know, I have met people, and he's like, I'm not the Phantom. Kid, stoop, you idiot. <laughs> um, but he basically says that, like, the point is, is that the Phantom, the Phantom of the Opera, was a, he was an, he was a symbol. He was a figure. He was something to be feared. He was, you know, he could come out of the shadows. He was some, like, he was this figure that, like, you didn't care if he was real or not. All you knew is the fear that he would come at you. And she's like, so you want me to be, like, from a hero to be something to fear, or to be something feared? And he goes, the only people who need to be afraid of you are those who should be afraid of you. So, she put this, so Marinette puts on the mask and becomes the Phantom of the Opera. In fact, a little bit of a crossover here, real, of a third crossover, but he basically gives her a voice mod, you know, to hide her voice, and the voice mod is um, the ghost face voice mod. She, she's like, you're giving me a voice mod of, the, of a series of murders that happened in America? And he goes, yeah, Fear Factor, remember? And she's like, how'd you get this? And he goes, it's amazing what you can find in a dumpster. <laughs> Be, so, Ducard, like, excuse me, not Ducard, uh, like, he is like her Ducard, but he, uh, um, Eric is just like, now get out there and, and you know, right the wrongs that were done to you. So that's what Marinette does for the series of weeks. Like, she takes on this identity of the Phantom of the Opera and is, like, scaring criminals, sc like, scaring um, the strike force that's hunting her. She's kind of like the sh like a French version of the Shadow, where she takes on this identity and is, like, scaring people, trying to figure out who framed her. She's already thinking it's Hawk Moth, but it's not the thing is she discovers it's not Hawk Moth. Hawk Moth was curious, but it wasn't him. Like, she even tries to di suss out, because remember, different continuity, doesn't know it's Gabriel yet. So she's trying to suss out that it's Hawk Moth, and even, like, with all of the despair going on, she still has time to fight monsters, but she's not Diakuma. When she sees Nakuma, like, after destroying the uh, thing that's possessed, she actually, like, <laughs> she takes, like, a knife and just throws it at the butter butterfly and kills it, the little Akuma, uh, Akuma rather than purifying it. And she can't, like, status quo-yo anything. So, yeah. Obviously, with the he other heroes, they're like, uh, who the fuck is this? And Cat Noir thinks it is, Mar it is um, Marinette, his lady. And he goes to find her after take... Because here's the thing. Um, 
Adrian, because he has a little more agency in this story, he's been taking care of the box and all the Kwamis and hiding them desperately from his father and and, uh, and Natalie. Um, it's harder to do because there's cameras. Every, um, there's like, well, cam they don't show up on cameras, but you know what I mean. Him walking around with a weird box with symbols on it, yeah, that's going to cause some... Um, some heads to turn but him and Alia have been trying of like taking care of the Kwamis they've also been trying to keep in contact with the other heroes who have been given their miraculous but yeah they're being round slowly they're each being rounded up and captured um thankfully the Kwamis managed to escape like the thing is is like their, their Kwamis managed to escape without being captured so yeah it's getting pretty bad but now you have this entrance of a new person called the phantom and whoever this phantom is is scaring the shit out of everyone so but Ad but adrian believes that it is ladybug it is marinette so he and alia go to find him uh, go to find the phantom and the phantom is just like i don't know who you're talking about <laughs> this you know this girl is dead <laughs> you know the, uh, you know, Marinette Dupang Chang died. I am the, uh, you know, there it is now and forever the Phantom of the Opera and just throws down a smoke bomb and escapes. So, even though Marinette's just like, I hate this, I hate lying to them. Um, but yeah, now does Marinette use guns? No, she does not. She's all depending on, like, you know, like I said, illusion. She's almost like a heroic Mysterio. Um, <laughs> She also has like a more like uh, like how she scares villain. Like I said, she's like the shadow, where she like makes a horrible cackling laugh to put fear into people. It is eventually revealed that the person who was behind it, it actually turns out that the person behind these um, these kid like the person who framed Ladybug was um, Lila. Turns out, yeah, Lila. Um, actually cat like used an akuma that was meant for her she kept it and hid it and made her and changed the akuma with her own malice into something else into something she could use for herself and made herself look like ladybug is that a real thing who the fuck cares if thomas asterisk can make a you know bullshit on the fly i can make bullshit on the fly how about that right so what happens is that a lot of like um Lila did it as like, yeah, I'm the one who leaked that you were Marinette. It it took me a while to figure out that you were Marinette, but like I just followed the pattern because uh, you all, no matter where, you know, Ladybug goes, she always goes back to the bakery by the end of it. Even Alia couldn't figure that out. Holy shit, how dumb is that bitch? And and she's like, yeah, <laughs> I know it's you under the uh, under that mask, Marinette. Do you want to take it off and show everyone? And Mar Marinette's just like, she just takes the mask off and immediately she's like, well, I guess this is the point where I, you know, you can't go back to your life and, you know, nothing can, uh, nothing can, you know, be ever be the same again. And she goes, Marinette goes, you're right. Nothing can ever be the same again. And proceeds to kick the bitch out of, the, out of a window onto a, like, car, or, like onto a parked car, killing her. <laughs> Yeah, she just killed someone, and now she's like, well, like like she said, I'm not Marinette, I'm the Phantom. And, it, like, yeah, now she's on the run from Cops Forever, Ladybug is no more, there is only the Phantom. And when she goes, she flees back to underground into the catacombs, she finds an old charred mask. Now, the mask she was wearing was kind of more like the Lon Chaney, um like full cover mask like from the silent movie this mask is more like like from the theater like you'd see from the theater but yeah it's charred it's burned and it's a note saying you know <laughs> you are the phantom eric and that's when she realizes yeah she wasn't talking to a re she that was the real phantom of the opera but that was like his ghost so yeah the phantom had died ages ago but his spirit lived on and now he even like says in the note I'm, le you know, I'm leaving my legacy to you, my new angel. And Marinette finds, like, the ca the old ruin, the old 
secret lair of the Phantom and makes it her base of operation from here on out, because now she is the Phantom forever. So there you go, guys. Um, that's my uh, new Ladybug Phantom of the Opera crossover. Let me know if you guys want a sequel of this. I'm, I would like to expand on this, but yeah. But yeah, for right now, you guys tell me in the comments below, what did you guys think of it? Like it? Hate it? Comment below, let me know. Other than that, hope you all enjoyed this. I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in the multiverse.